Okay, you guys, welcome to Talk Tennis. It's Michelle coming at you. Solo episode here. I wanted to do a recap of the BMP Paribas Open in Indian Wells, California. And in true fashion, I was hoping to record a bunch of these podcasts where we recapped our day and gave you like behind the scenes looks. But the days just like literally run into each other. And it was a long week. So (laughs) we weren't able to capture any podcasts when we were down there with the playtest team and full transparency. It's a bit of a nightmare sometimes to coordinate with the crew and get everyone in into the studio at the same time and match up schedules. So I'm coming at you solo. One of my favorite podcasters does solo episodes. So I'm going to try to do my best. Hopefully this is an engaging episode. I'm kind of just going to run you through the week, give you some behind the scenes info, tell you what we did, tell you what kind of things we actually do while we're down there. It's such a fun time, but it's also like exhausting because there's something every hour and sometimes we're on site, sometimes we're off site, sometimes we start at eight in the morning and don't finish well until nine at night. And um, yeah, so here's a little bit of a sneak peek into the experience. I had such an amazing time. I seem to connect. I have a big birthday coming up and I seem to connect with like all these players players, not players, sorry, people from my past. And it was a very cool experience where I saw coaches that I hadn't seen in like 30 years. And it's really fun to see us all still in the industry and connecting and like no one has changed. Everyone looks the same, just a little bit older, maybe a couple more wrinkles. So that was really cool. I loved connecting with everyone. But let's start from the beginning. So we drove out the Saturday before the tournament started. It's a fairly long drive for us from San Luis Obispo to Indian Wells. Um, I would say without traffic, it's about five hours. So it's it's a solid six hours in the car. Um, It's a grind. You're exhausted by the time you get out there. And usually the first thing we do is go to the grocery store. What I love about BNP, and it's always been this way, is like no matter which grocery store you pick in the valley, like you run into a player. So uh, we're shopping for stuff for the week, and I go to Brit, and I'm like, "Is that Cam Nori?" And it 100% was. He is, I mean, for a top 10 ATP player, very incognito. I don't think anyone would know, have known it was him except for like the tennis geeks like us. Um, and I just always remember him when he played at TCU. So his coach and friend had like TCU gear on. So I was like, confirm Cam Nori. And, uh, for us, sometimes I feel like you kind of keep seeing the same people over and over and over. And Cam Nori was one of those guys where it was like, wherever we went, it was like, oh, that's Cam Nori. And I'm like, I hope he doesn't think we're following him. We weren't, I promise. Um, so that was fun. Just kind of a low key evening for us Saturday, getting all our gear ready to go. We hit the ground running on Sunday and we had, um, a decent size size crew is Chris, Jason, Brittany, and I from the playtest team working on capturing content. And then we had two video guys with us. And so that first day, I had a podcast scheduled with the Babylot team. And there was some other stuff going on. So we literally split the team, divide and conquer to get all the things done. So the first podcast we did actually turned into two. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. And I know you guys loved that Pure Arrow podcast that we did with Olivier from Babylot. And this time we did two, one on, I think I can say it, the Pure Arrow Rafa racket, Origin, that will be coming out this year, and another franchise of rackets that's getting updated. I'm pretty sure I can say, but just in case, I won't say exactly which one, Um, but if you know or (laughs) you watch the cadence of what's getting updated, I'm sure you can imagine which rackets I'm talking about. Um, so that was an awesome start. The backdrop's absolutely beautiful. You will have to tune in to that one on the video because we were at the La Quinta Resort. Babylon was capturing a bunch of content with their players, and it's just cool. And then from there, we had an opportunity to work with Luisa Stefani, who has been um, part of Team T-Dub now for several years. She is 
absolutely amazing. She's so friendly. She's so kind. She's like very, I think it's the Brazil culture. They're so awesome. But she's on her comeback and she won Australian Open mixed and she won another title already. And she's back playing with Gabby Dabrowski this week. And so far, so good. So it's always fun working with Lou. She is super nice. Um, We filmed a couple videos with her. One is all about her pre court routine, especially coming back from injury. And then another one is a really cool doubles drill that I actually, I've, I've seen it done a few times, but not a ton of people have talked, talk about this one. And I really enjoyed it. So I think you guys will. So stay tuned for that. Um, from there, we hop to a different club and, uh, we're able to film with Marco Skiron, another longtime Team Tita player. He has had a great year, a great couple years. He's, I want to say, like top 60 ATP right now. Again, he's always super fun. His crew is awesome. And it's just a good time whenever we get a chance to film with him. And he's recently changed his string setup. So he did a video talking all about that. There's some social stuff that he did. What else? Um, uh, what else? What else? He He's like rocking the case with shoes. I think he's in Viore right now. So he's trying that out. Really fun shoe. It was a little windy. I'm not going to lie. But the backdrop of all of these videos is just epic with all the palm trees and like the sunset. Some of them are golden hour. So it was a good first day. I can't even remember like what we did that evening. (laughs) I know there were a lot of nights where we were so tired. We couldn't even like figure out how to order dinner. (laughs) So um, that's the vibe some days. Uh, Monday, the next day, we got so lucky and got to work with a couple Technofiber pros, double specialists. So Elise Mertens and Joe Salisbury came out. And they did some really cool videos with us. They talked about what makes good doubles rackets, what makes good doubles partners. They showed us some doubles tips and tricks. Both of them, incredibly lovely people. Elise was awesome. She was so sweet. Everyone had said she's a little shy. She was very kind. Joe is just like, it's the UK accent for me and kind of got that little smirk. Um, so it was really fun working with them. They were super kind and did a ton of double stuff. So I know you guys love doubles, so that will be awesome. I feel like I should also be like clicking through my photos and showing and sharing, um, as I go through (laughs) explaining what all we did. But so from there, we, we also shot that day. I think some of these are blend together, but we did work with Cam Nori, that afternoon with Babylon. And just to give you a picture as to what these players are doing specifically before the tournament even starts, a lot of them have in their contracts that they have to do a certain amount of um, shooting, uh, press for the brands that are their sponsors. So he had been working with Babylon, I think, for three hours that day already getting, you know, photos for the rest of the year, videos, capturing content. And then he came to T-Dub and you could tell he was, it's, it had been a long day, but uh, we're, our crews dialed in. So we got him in and out. It was really fun. I had the opportunity to feed him and I wasn't sure if he like hated my fees or was trolling me or whatnot. I could, it was windy. I couldn't hear a bunch But after the fact, uh, the guys were telling me that he was surprised that I could feed a good ball and um, he was just having fun with it. So really cool personality, lefty, very uh, crafty. He kept hitting these little drop shots, cheeky little shots, uh, big serve. Obviously, you guys have seen him play. Uh, It's really cool to see his success, especially coming out of college tennis. And it was really fun working with him. What else? Okay, let's go to Tuesday. This was another day where our team divided and conquered. Um, I was on the end with our team T-Dub squad. They came rolling in deep on Tuesday. And we had three different times that players came through to film content. The first crew was Asia Mohammed, Alexa Garachi, and Aaron Routliff. 
And it's really cool because they're all friends. So they're having a good time together while they're still working. But um, Asia did an awesome video with us. She is considering switching from her E-Zone 100 to the V-Core 95, <laughs> which is a little crazy. When she first said that, I was like, please, I have all the questions. But you're going to have to stay tuned to the video to see more in-depth talk. However, I know she started originally with the V-Core when she was started with Yonex. And um, she was looking for just a little bit more control. So filmed with her literal first impressions hitting with the V-Core 95. She really liked it. She really liked it. She took it with her. I saw her a few times throughout the tournament after that. I did not see her using that racket, but it, you can imagine how incredibly hard it is to switch mid-tournament, mid-season. So don't fault her for that. We also actually ended up giving her a V-Core 98 to try. So she might be switching this year. We'll see. Stay tuned. I guess we just got to keep watching. Um, but that was a really cool video. I think you guys will like it, especially because I know you guys have the same questions. But she's looking for a little more control. And she really liked the feel of the V-Core 95. Then from there, we had Alexa and Aaron, who, cool story, they both played at Alabama, I think, well, I know Alexa's a little bit older. I don't know if they were actually on the team at the same time, but they know each other, obviously, from being teammates. And then when they started their career on the ITF circuit, they played together for a bit. So this is kind of them coming back together as a team. You can tell they have good chemistry. They have fun on the court. They're friends. And so far, they've had a great tournament. So it looks to be a good new pairing. Um, they taught us some of the keys to being solid doubles players and like what they try to do. They talked a little bit about eye formation and how they try to set up their points. And then, I don't know if you guys realize this, there's a lot of pros that don't know gear very well at all. You ask them what racket they use and they say the blue one from whatever brand. Um, so we did a video with them and had Chris teach them some things about rackets, which it, I thought turned out really cool. I'm excited for you guys to see it. Uh, they both use Wilson Pro Lab rackets. So one, Aaron uses the Blade Pro and Alexa uses the Ultra Pro. So we gave them a little schooling in their gear and it was super fun having them. Then after that, we had the USC ladies from Team T-Dub drive to the tournament. I think Juju almost was the only one that got in. So Caitlin Christian, Danielle Lau, Juju almost, and Sabrina, Santa Maria all came in from LA to film with us. They're so cute. They are like best friends through and through. I know some of them are even like neighbors. They practice together. They know each other so well. They're super fun, like really good energy. We did one of those fun, trendy videos with them, the ones where you like cl everyone closes their eyes and then points to the person most likely to. So <laughs> that gives you, that will give you an idea of some of their relationships and their banter, and they're super cute. Um, as far as content, Danielle Lau recently switched her hybrid cross. So she did a video on that. She's using Technofiber NRG Squared now, which is very popular, obviously. I think previously she was using Babylot Tonic and it got discontinued. So she went through a search and landed on that. So she does a video talking about that. Um, Juju almost is doing the video that you all have been waiting for. She is a Vapor Pro user. And she's trying to figure out if she's going to go into the Vapor Pro 2 or the Vapor 11. Literally right before I pushed record, she was texting me more feedback on the shoes. But she did make a decision. She really likes the styling of one, but realizes the other one should be the one she's wearing. So you're going to have to stay tuned for that. Um, little things there's obviously been changes, and that Vapor Pro 2 is not the Vapor Pro that everyone got accustomed to and loves, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if she sticks with what she chose. 
Um, and then we used Sabrina and Caitlin, since they are a doubles team. We did some content with them. Ironically, they wear the same shoes and they use the same racket. So we did some, we did basically a shoe review, why they wear those shoes. And then they taught some footwork and warm up stuff. And then the racket they use and why they use that racket and why it works in doubles. So they wear Mizuno shoes and they both are vocal players. So really cool. Sabrina's been with the brand since she was like 12, I think, or 16. And she just turned 30. So it shows you she uh, she's very loyal to that brand and then basically influenced Caitlin <laughs> to switch. I don't know who started the shoes, but they both also wear Mizuno. So after that, Desiree Kravchuk came out to film with us, another Team T-Dub lady. And I think I've mentioned it a few times on this podcast, but I coached the Palm Desert High School team when Desiree was a freshman. So I don't think we had been on a court together since then. <laughs> it's been a minute. When was that? That was probably 2007. No. 2006? Maybe, no, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm feeling old now. But uh, yeah, Desiree, I always love this story. She is, if you know her, or if you've ever met her, she's very bubbly, very social. She loves her friends. And she wanted to join the tennis team to be around all these friends and young ladies that she, you know, wanted to hang out with. And uh, I don't know if her Dad had the same idea, but she came to tryouts. Her dad was out of town, basically joined the team, got on the team, and then her dad came home and was like, I'm playing high school tennis. But cool story. We had such an awesome team. It was a no-cut team. I think there were like 23 or 26 players, and everyone had so much fun. Like Girls that played one or two were still friends with players that would have been 20 or 21 on the team. We ended up winning CIF, which was amazing, went undefeated that season. And now Des is just kicking butt on the doubles court. It's really cool to see. Um, so she came out and taught us some tips on hitting a backhand as a lefty. That's kind of her signature shot. Uh, I don't know if people still call it this, but when she was younger, it was Baby Bullet was her nickname because she had the backhand bullet basically drives that backhand and. If you've ever watched her, you know exactly what I mean. So that was fun. Always love seeing Des. What else? Oh, my gosh. I tell you, like, I, the days run together. I've got notes and on everything. But we also filmed with Daniil Medvedev from Technofiber. And he got to talk about his new string plus his Lacoste shoes really cool. And then one of our guys, one of our guys, one of the colleagues, one of our colleagues from Europe was there also Alex, you've probably seen him on some of our reviews. And he got to do a bag check with Daniel in French, really cool. So keep an eye out for that. That uh, was a fun shoot. The club that we shot at had a heads up that he would be there. So a crowd quickly formed <laughs> and people were waiting and had their cocktails and it was cool. And he's such a good guy. He's really easy to work with. So friendly, really well spoken. So I think that was a fun event for everyone. Um, and then after that, I actually got to hit on site, which it was, I think, already like seven o'clock. But... You know, if you have the opportunity, you take it. And we hit the courts. The practice courts were completely empty. I think it was the night that they had the big charity event on Stadium One. So only the security guards were out there, which was great because I probably would have been intimidated if there were players hitting next to me. Not really, but, you know. Um, and got to bash the ball around with a friend. And it was awesome. We he likes to geek out on gear. So I had brought a racket for him to try and he loved it. So it's stuff like that, that like just makes my day connecting with tennis players. And we like have that thing in common. And I think we both said like, if we could do this forever, just bash balls, not have to worry about score or pressure or yeah, it was amazing. I think we spent like two hours. It was, <laughs> we got kicked off the courts cause they need to wash them and they wash every court every night 
And so we finally were like, okay, okay, we'll leave. Bye. <laughs> Super fun. Um, let's see. Nah, the next day, Chris had an interview with Bjorn Borg. I'm going to not speak on that one because I wasn't there, but, and you'll have to stay tuned for the footage, but I know he was stoked and that was uh, thanks to Fila. And he also had a chance to talk to Riley Opelka. A little jealous of that one. I would have loved to pick Riley's brain. He's such an interesting character to me and likes to stir the pot a little, I think sometimes, at least on social media. So that was cool for Chris. And I'm very excited to watch those. Uh, we also had a chance to work with Coco Goff. Thank you to New Balance and talk to her about her shoes. She is so cool. <laughs> like, I am so glad that she is leading the way for American tennis players right now. She is just cute, bubbly, smart, funny, tall, athletic, like all the things and kind, friendly, just really nice to her fans really well-spoken, has her own opinion and wants to make sure that what she says are her words, not someone else's, which is so important, um, I think. Um, what else? Diodora. We had a chance to work with a couple of Diodora athletes, Nicole Melikar, and she's now married. I don't remember her husband's last name, but I know she's hyphenating. She was so well-spoken, talked about that blue shield Oh, it's not Blue Shield. Talked about that B icon uh, too. The update uh, she's wearing and uh, was very well spoken. Excited for you guys to see that. And then David Fokina came by. He is not the best speaker in English, so we actually did it in Spanish. So stay tuned for that. Um, he was pretty funny. He made us laugh. Let's see who else. We worked with Bethany Maddox Sands, as always. She is an OG tennis warehouse team T dub lady. She talks about her new racket of choice, which, if you watched the previous video, has changed. <laughs> but it was cool to hear her speak about why she switched again, even after that video and what she's getting out of her new racket of choice that she wasn't getting out of the speed. So very insightful. It's really cool to see a pro actually understand what their gear is doing for them. So I think you guys will really enjoy that. Plus, she gives us a couple drills because doubles queen, right? <laughs> um, she always brings the energy, and that was a really fun shoot as well. Who else... We went to a Yonex event, a Matsuri event, to celebrate 40 years of Yonex in the United States. And it was awesome. So cool. There was such an amazing story about how the relationship of this brand started in the U.S. and how the brand continues to build and connect these cultures and they had Darren Cahill, who I still think is just like, he's awesome. If you are a tennis person, you know, listening to him commentate, coach, talk about the sport is just a treat. So he's so cool. And then Pam Shriver was there and Herbert, her cats, I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly. I apologize, was there as well. And it was just a fun time hearing Alyssa speak about the brand and being a female leader in the industry is very cool. So we have some behind the scenes content of that that has come out and we have more coming. So stay tuned for that. What else? Okay. We also, you guys, I can't believe like I'm still talking. See, we do a lot when we're out there and it's been, it was so cool to connect with some of you. And I know some of you didn't get to connect with us and I apologize for that, but like you can tell we're bouncing from place to place to place to place. Oh, and that's like the funny story. We were going to this event and I'm like, you guys, I need to change. And they're like, okay, well, we'll find a Starbucks for you. So it's not like we had a lot of downtime. Change from my like sweaty T-dub gear to my nice dress in a Starbucks bathroom. <laughs> Glamorous. <laughs> but I'm glad that I had that. I had my backup, my clothes to change into. And anyways, it was great. Um, we went into the head string room a few times through the week and to paint a picture for you, 
the head string room at the BMP Paribas Open, which is like one of the biggest tournaments in the world, is like two containers. It's <laughs> we recorded a podcast with Dennis. I know you guys love Dennis, and this is now going to be the third year in a row, I think, or fourth, of recording podcasts with him during BMP, which I think is exciting. But um, it's it's not very big. It's not very glamorous. It's actually like off site in the parking lot, um, and. It's pretty funny because players are just dropping off their stuff to get restrung. And like right before we pushed record, team came in, Alcaraz came in. And uh, when we were recording the episode, I kind of lost my focus a little bit, imagine. And he, Dennis looks up and it's like, what are you, who are you looking at? Who came in? Are you fanboying? Um, but it was Musetti, which was good timing because he is actually a player that uses head rackets and head strings. So really cool. Uh, we did some really fun different stuff in the stringing room giving a shout out to those guys they work endlessly like all day and they're like under pressure getting it right (laughs) it's a grind um players sometimes have unrealistic expectations um as far as turnaround time on gear so for them to grind through and be able to provide a service for these players day in and day out it's it's pretty cool um, I, Chris told me he was saying how they split the draw in half and that each stringer is assigned to a player. So the players have consistent strings from the same stringer throughout the tournament. So if someone does something in a certain way, they're going to do it a certain way for that player the whole two weeks, which I think that's pretty cool. I also, okay, I don't fangirl too hard over things, but <laughs> we were capturing some practice court content and all of a sudden, like all of my favorite players from the early 2000s were practicing also. So Xavier Melise, yes, um, he is working with Alex Poprin. He was on the court next to one of the courts we were filming. And then Mark Philippoussis was practicing and is working with Stefano Sissipas. So the 14-year-old girl in me started freaking out and my team was kind of like shocked because all of a sudden I was like nervous. Oh my gosh, he's right there. I've got to watch him. But it was really cool because, I mean, it just instantly brought me back to watching these guys like 20, I don't even know how long ago it was, but I used to go every year to Indian Wells and (laughs) I have pictures from every year of these guys practicing and I had a chance to talk to Melise a little bit about equipment, and it was really fun. Definitely a highlight for me. Uh, there was a coach joking that I'm living my best 90s tennis life, and I can confirm <laughs> this is true. Uh, what else? Oh, I was going to give you guys some insight into some of the practices we watched. We're going to do something a little bit different this year where we filmed the full practice and we're going to break it down and let you know what kind of drills the players were doing and what they were focusing on. So we have full practices coming from Coco Golf with Jessica Pagula. Uh, we got one of the first practices of Carlos Alcaraz. We saw Carlos practicing with Francis Tiafo. That was fun. Really cool. Uh, we saw Ben Shelton practicing with Dan Evans. That was fun because Dan was kind of trolling Shelton and saying, like, this isn't college tennis anymore. And those two were putting on a serving clinic. It was awesome. Um, We saw Andy Murray practicing. We got a full, I'm very excited about this one, a full 90-minute practice from Iga. And to put it lightly, she is so professional. She brings the intensity. She... Oh, she's amazing. Now I know. I mean, like, we've all seen her play. She's she's awesome. But her work ethic and the way she's so focused in her practice is really something to aspire to, I think. It was amazing. We saw footwork drills. They were monitoring, monitoring her heart rate and probably distance that she traveled on the court. Um, very cool. So very excited to break that practice down for you guys. What else? Of course, we saw Bethany Maddox-Sands practicing. And we caught, our last day, we caught the practice between Alex Rublev and Karen Ketchinoff, which was pretty cool. 
it seemed like they gathered quite the crowd <laughs> and uh, they stayed, I would say they stayed for at least 15 to 20 minutes just signing autographs. So very cool. Um, a few other stories, little tea, I guess. I don't even know. You guys probably already have heard this, but one of the big rumblings, I think, uh, was how slow the courts were or are. How slow the courts are. I think I can confirm now that I've hit on site this year. They're slow. They're so slow. Um, it's kind of interesting. I was struggling when I was hitting with my volleys, like really struggling. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, am I nervous? Like what's going on? <clears throat> and the person I was hitting with was like, yeah, it's the courts. And I'm like not even thinking about that. But then I realized like, yeah, if you're really not – propulsing forward and pushing our volley forward, it's not going anywhere. So when we talk about the players having to adapt to different surfaces and different, you know, speeds of court, it's a real thing and actually legit. Um, going from there, I know the ball topic is always controversial and has continued to kind of be a talking point. I, without being too um, opinionated one way or the other, I don't really get why the men and women are sometimes using different balls. Thank goodness the balls do, they get new balls throughout the set because those balls are getting torn up on those courts. They are, yes, um, the courts are gritty. The courts are, the balls are getting torn up. With that being said, it's not my decision, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but it's tough going from tournament to tournament. The balls do play slightly different. I know that sounds crazy. Like you don't think you can ch tell a difference. Go grab a champ ball and a regular duty ball and an extra duty ball from the same brand and go experiment with yourself on the differences. And you will see there is a difference. The cores feel different. The felt feels different. Give it like literally play with them for a couple weeks and see, like literally look at them and you'll see. Um, the crowds were absolutely insane on the middle weekend, <laughs> like crazy. It was so hard to get from point A to point B, especially carrying equipment. <laughs> I apologize if I rammed into any of you with a tripod because that happened. Um, it was cool to see tennis is back. People are stoked. The t our tent was always busy. It was so hard to just go and pop in and pop out because, you would run into someone or catch up with someone or talk about something with someone or being stuck in the middle of a, a stampede to, uh, for people to get autographs. So that was cool. Um, another trend that I kind of wanted to hit on is we just saw in January so many new rackets come out, right? And there's a lot of players transitioning to updated rackets. And I know a lot of you think that everyone plays with pro stock. That is not true a lot of players do get pro stock rackets the top 20 probably pro stock rackets there are a lot of players on tour that are using stock rackets and get them customized for what they like i mean i literally told you about asia <laughs> playing with the v court 95 we brought it we gave it to her and she will customize it to get her spec but it's off the shelf so there are a lot of players and i know of two just personally, I know of two that are switching and struggling. So one, I'm not going to name names. Well, I might name one a name. But the one that I'm talking about, she switched into an updated racket. She felt like she couldn't trust the racket in her match. She's had a rough year already. And she switched back to her old one. Between BMP and Miami, she'll be using her old one. It doesn't mean that, you know, she's no longer endorsed by that company or she doesn't have whatever, but she needs to be confident in her equipment. And this, a lot of people are struggling with some transition. So would you guys have the same problem? No, that it's like, okay, it's, it's a thing. Why would you be super trusting of something you've only used for two months versus two years? Maybe I'm seeing it a different way, but that's just how I am. Um, the one that I am going to talk about, because I thought it was kind of cool, Danielle Collins, she endorses, plays with, endorses the Pure Arrow. Not sure if it's extended, but lost first round um, to a qualifier. 
she clearly wasn't having the best time out there. A little, um, I love her for it, but a little sassy. And her coach, who is uh, a Technofiber sponsored coach, went to the tennis warehouse court, demo court, and grabbed a Technofiber Iga 298. Got it restrung for her, gave it to her to play doubles with. She's playing with Peyton Stearns. And they won, and she loved it. And he went and bought two, got them customized, strung, done. She's playing with ego rackets right now. And you guys are all probably like, no, no way. Like, it's got to be whatever. No, she <laughs> literally grabbed the demo off the t demo court. That's, I know it was, I know you guys know because I already saw it on Twitter. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not spilling any secrets, but it's stuff like that that I think is really cool and like makes it. I'll come back to like, it doesn't matter what level you are. We all sometimes struggle with gear, feel, can't get a ball in, feel like we can't do anything on the court that's successful. <laughs> but um, last but not least, we, well, we haven't in the last couple of years, but J this is all Jason. Um, he always finds a really fun game that we can play with the players that has nothing to do with tennis, but brings out all of the competitive juices so this year, well, there was a fun one. Uh, I think it's called Bullseye. Bullseye ball. <laughs> uh, it's a little mini basketball game with these little like pellets that you, it's like ski ball, but basketball. <laughs> so um, stay tuned for that video. Really fun and competitive people just, you cannot put us all in the same room because we get crazy. Some of the players take it to such an extreme. Um, some players just like completely disengage or like, I don't care. I'll do it once and I don't care. Other players need like a 10 minute warm up, And uh, it's really funny. These are these are the moments that are just really fun um, to show. I know I put a YouTube short up of Chris trying to play it. And I'm not shocked at who got the top score. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to ruin it. Actually, someone on our crew, shout out to Daniel, who is always in charge of all of our amazing videos or half of our amazing videos that we get shot out there. He for sure like figured out the best strategy and he could coach you on how to do it best. Maybe I'll put a link in the show notes so you can buy one and try it out yourself. But that about wraps up a little behind the scenes check-in for the BMP Paribas Open. Indian Wells, California. I'm actually recording this as the tournament's still going on. It's pouring rain in San Luis Obispo, and I desperately need like sunshine and palm trees um, and tan and tennis. But luckily, it's not raining out there. So we'll be watching on Tennis Channel today. And hopefully you guys got some fun little tid tidbits. And that's it. That's a wrap for Tennis Warehouse, BMP, Paribas Open. By the time this comes out, the tournament will be over. So hopefully you guys all that got to go had an amazing time. We always love seeing you. Thanks for coming and saying hello. And we have some more podcasts from that week coming out. Plus, there's a podcast coming from a Wilson athlete that I'm very excited about. She was amazing. I fangirled over her. She's awesome. So stay tuned. And as always, let us know what you want to hear more of. Tell me if you can't stand this solo episode or you're into it. Um, hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week. And of course, happy hitting. Happy hitting.